good evening everybody i am uh, going to talk on something which is uh, um, considered fairly controversial but uh, has apparently you know a lot of uh, uh, potential a lot of people uh, think it's a placebo but uh, it's still under investigation uh, this gentleman as you all know is uh, uh, somehow connected with this topic and uh, towards the end of the talk i let you know how so coming to prp or uh, platelet rich plasma what exactly is prp so in prp it's autologous blood which is concentrated so that the platelet count is much above the baseline and it has to be at least five times the normal platelet count and the important thing is the growth factors uh, it's uh very important because of its growth factors so looking at the history uh, it has been there for several years but somehow it's uh, come into the uh, attention of uh, orthopedics only recently in the 1990s uh, it was uh, more popularly used as biological glue uh, in plastic surgery and in 2010 uh, lopez and uh, vidriero they came up with uh, certain uh, features uh, which could be useful in orthopedics they said it's got bone forming anti inflammatory antibacterial properties and much more recently uh, we have found other properties like uh, analgesic wound healing coagulation uh, hemostasis as well uh, this is uh, just to show that it's been used in uh, by vets as well uh, apparently it's very popular uh, in horse racing equestrian uh, events and it's been used for uh, in baldness uh, i mean not by the orthopods so the recent interest uh, has been basically in uh, tendinopathies and uh, soft tissue uh, injuries which have not responded to other methods now to understand really uh, about prp one has to know the tissue healing response and if you look at uh, the normal tissue healing response uh, as soon as uh, there is injury uh, you know the platelets are delivered and these in turn release a lot of growth factors i won't go into all the details but a concentrated delivery of platelets is believed to accelerate uh, tissue healing and potentially reduce pain so the initial inflammation uh, cellular matrix proliferation everything lasts several weeks and uh, the reparative process maturation remodeling etc goes on for several months um, sorry about the slide but this gives a list of all the platelet growth factors that we are talking about uh, the first uh, three are very important um, namely the platelet derived growth factor the vascular endothelial growth factor the transforming growth factor these uh, are supposed to have a key role in um, in prp now how do you uh, go about preparing uh, platelet rich plasma it's fairly simple you take a sample of the patient's blood uh, approximately 30 ml and this blood is then uh, uh, put in um, you know centrifuge there are several methods and gravitational platelet sequestration is uh, the commonest method and then it's activated by endogenous or exogenous pathway uh, with these substances calcium chloride and thrombin so here you see a centrifuge in the blood being put there now the thing is the end product once you finish the centrifuge you will find that uh, the resultant is visible in three layers the bottom layer is red blood cells it is a buffy layer of white blood cells and then there is a top layer and this is the top layer in which we are interested in and all this has to be done under aseptic technique um, you know in in your uh, blood bank or whatever so this is just a diagram to show the blood being taken from the patient uh, and they recommend 15 minutes Uh, at 3200 rpm of centrifugation 
and then uh, the the PRP is extracted about 5 mils of it and then it's injected into uh, the specific region so this is how it looks you have three layers and uh, the top layer is what we are interested in so what are the orthopedic applications so uh, several non-surgical and surgical applications commonest is uh, uh, tennis and golfers elbow plantar fasciitis patellar tendinopathies muscle strains and also it's been used in osteoarthritis of the knee surgically uh, chronic rotator cuff tears achilles tendons we are getting chronic tears meniscal repairs acl reconstructions a lot of a lot of surgeons i know inject it around the uh, after acl reconstruction and apparently it improves graft maturation uh, and is more effective in pain control so it's just a diagram of it being injected into um, a shoulder sorry so what are the strengths of prp first thing is it's patient's own blood so there is no genetic engineering involved the complications are minimal uh, infection systemic effects allergies are, are virtually unknown and cortisone injections can cause tendon ruptures especially if you give it in the into the achilles tendon but that hassle is not here and also dermal atrophy is not known it's readily available as long as there is blood and there is no ex or uh, shelf no shelf life sorry and what are the weaknesses see despite all this interest there are very few uh, RCTs or random uh, controlled trials there is not enough clinical evidence um, and it's costly uh, in the US it can cost anything from 150 to a thousand dollars per syringe and apparently it's not covered under your insurance since it's considered experimental and these are some of the questions uh, which uh, are still being answered how much uh, injection do you put in you know what is the most effective preparation how do you activate it what is the technique do you give it once or twice uh, what is the timing and how many uh, series of injections is it single or multiple and what is the rehab protocol after such an injection so uh, you know people are still look, looking into it and uh, I am doing a small study in my hospital as well uh, I have the commonest patients I see where I could use this is uh, tennis elbow we see a lot of these uh, impingement sy syndrome in the shoulder and plantar fasciitis so we have chosen a few patients um, about five of each and it's an ongoing study Oh, sorry and so uh, apparently Nadal used it in his knees so that's the answer thank you